folk tale. Her goals for this project are to tell a folk tale that is entertaining and to use vivid imagery and voice to enhance the tale. Her speech will be seven to nine minutes, so seven to nine minutes. Annette has adapted Rudyard Kipling's story, How the Elephant Got His Trunk for You Today. Please welcome Annette LaVoy. curiosity. And he looked like all the other elephants. He had short legs that looked like tree stumps that were good for getting him around and stomping on things. He had big flat ears like palm fronds for keeping him cool in the hot African sun. And like all other elephants, he had a short, stubby nose like a boot. And he used it like all other elephants, mm -hmm. to push down the trees and reach his food. Because everyone knows that elephants, their legs are too long to be able to eat the grass, their necks are too short to be able to eat the leaves from the trees, so they have to use their nose to push over the tree and eat their food. But this elephant's child was different. When all the other elephants went off to play, they're gambling and chasing and playing games that allow them to build this strong boot-like trunk. They push and they shove and they play all day long and then they fall asleep exhausted at night dreaming of victory in these shoving matches the next day. But not our elephant's child. Our elephant's child had insatiable curiosity. So what did he do? He had questions. All day long, our elephant's child asked questions. And all night long, he dreamed of more questions. He asked his mother, Mother, why do the birds fly? And the mother beat him. She spanked him with her nose, because everyone knows that insatiable curiosity is not a good thing. He asked his aunt, the ostrich, Ostrich, why does your tail feather grow just so. And the ostrich shushed him and spanked him because everyone knows nothing good comes from curiosity. So then he asked the giraffe, his friend the giraffe, the long nose and lots of, or long neck and lots of spots. Giraffe, why do you have spots? The giraffe spanked him with his hoofs. As everyone knows, nothing came that was good out of curiosity. So one day, the elephant's child had an especially difficult question. He says to his entire family, what does the crocodile eat for dinner? Hush, 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 say the family. Don't talk about the crocodile. Everyone knows you can't talk about the crocodile. And they all spanked him and spanked him and spanked him with their noses and their, and their ears and their, their tails, everything they could get a hold of because no one should talk about the crocodile. But the elephant's child was curious. He had an insatiable curiosity, and he wanted to know, what does the crocodile eat for dinner? So he wanders off and asks the cola cola bird. Well, Mr. Cola cola bird, what does the crocodile eat for dinner? He says, my my aunts have spanked me. My friend the ostrich has spanked me. My, my cousins have spanked me, all for my insatiable curiosity. But I have to know, what does the crocodile eat for dinner? Coco, says the cola cola bird. Go find out for yourself. The crocodile lives by the gray, green, greasy Lampopo River. Go find out the answer to your question. So he does. Off he wanders, the elephant's child, <coughs> down to find the river. So he's on his own, 
That's a long walk. I'm getting tired. He's getting hungry because it's quite a way to the river. And he doesn't have a neck that allows him to reach the top uh, leaves. He doesn't have legs that allow him to eat the grass. So he's limited to the very small saplings that he can push over with his little boot that he hasn't developed very much yet and eat the leaves from the trees that bent. Finally, he makes it down and he gets to the, the banks of the great green, greasy Lampopo River. And he sees the snake, the gray python snake, coiled up on the top of a rock. And he asks very politely, because you need to be polite to snakes. Please, Mr. Snake, I have a question. Have you seen a crocodile in these parts? Well, what a question, child. What will you ask me next? Well, my next question is, do you know what the crocodile eats for dinner? And lo and behold, the snake starts to spank the office child. Because everyone knows that nothing good came from curiosity. So he spanks the office child. In frustration, the office child walks to the banks and sits down by a log. The log blinks. The log is the crocodile. He's found the crocodile. I can ask my question. <laughs> but like the snake, with the crocodile, you have to be extremely polite. And he really wants to know the answer. And he's got the perfect person to ask. He's asking the crocodile. So he sits down. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Crocodile. Please, sir. Will you answer me a question? Hmm. Yes. Yes, child. Well, Mr. Crocodile, I've always wanted to know, what is it you eat for dinner? Now this child takes a step back because he knows what happens when he asks questions. He's probably going to get spanked, and he doesn't like it spanked by someone like the crocodile. He's seen this big, thick tail in the water, so he takes a little step back. And the, the crocodile, by the by, said, you know what, Elvis child, I will answer your question. But you've got to come closer, <laughs> because I'm parched. Thank you, Mr. Crocodile. Please tell me, what is it you eat for dinner? Come a little closer, said the crocodile. My throat is really scratchy. OK. Thank you, Mr. Crocodile. What is it you eat for dinner? Elf with child being really close to here, and the crocodile snout grabs him with his thrashy teeth, and he says, Well, I think today I started with Elf with child. And the elf and child goes, No, no! And he sits back and he's pulling and he's pulling and he's pulling to get his nose back. And finally, pop, he falls back in the river, and his nose is, is clear from the thrashy, mashy jaws of the crocodile. But his long nose, his lovely little nose, has now become long. It's flopping around the river. He doesn't know what to do with it. So he stands up, shakes his head, because he's finally learned nothing comes that's good out of too much curiosity. And he starts to walk home. Along the way, he gets really hungry, but he's too, his nose is too sore to push over the saplings and get any of the leaves. And so he's walking along and he reaches up with his nose and he grabs the leaf. Ha ha! My trunk has value. My trunk will save me. And he goes back to his family with his long trunk. Rather than be embarrassed and, and having learned a lesson about the dangers of his insatiable curiosity, he now has something that he can share with everyone. And when they ask him, how did you get your trunk? He uses his long trunk and he spanks them one <laughs> after another and says, nothing ever came but out of too much curiosity.